Hello, and welcome to the Doc Exchange, a real stories podcast in partnership with the Grierson Trust. Every week, I'll ask a new filmmaker or filmmaking team about three documentaries connected by a single theme that have made a meaningful impression on their work and life. Okay, come by. Mm. Show me what you got. Um, I dare a crowbar, like sharpen the sharpening up my attic and fill top it. Top it. Uh, if it's just now uh, that there's that there's like whacking somebody or just put it that age. Heavy when he had the power knock them out, but if you want to kill them, use that age. Um, There's my favorite weapons, like hatchet. Sweet. You already throw it at somebody, kill them, point blank straight away. Had them over the head Does something good at head split in half like a melon. So, you have to bang your head. Somebody's run. Throw it at them. Pierce full of circuit. This is like my torture weapon here. Bolt cutters, cut somebody's finger off it, they've annoyed you. Do this. Another one of them hammers. I would pick a big chip with it. Is that the end? Um, the show? If you were to go up my attic, you'd be up there all year. So I was indeed tell Philip anything. They was told to take him in a taxi. I was to take him to a certain place to get him shot that night. I dropped him off and I watched him walking down the lane and, and then I seen the man coming towards him. and then just turned around and just was bang, bang. I didn't hear a gun shot or anything about when I got shot. No one still in the media. I think they fucking shot me and just went on the house next door. I changed the clothes and I'd stand with the front laughing there when I was going on down once. Why would they do that? Because they shot me. You know what I mean? 
Ja, das ist der. And um, then they stitched up behind the bullet. One of the wee bullets is still behind the kneecap. One of the wee bullets. It's a wee bullet. Um, nine millimeter bullet. He was in shop with nine millimeter. What was he shot with? A point three thing. Point I don't three. know, whatever that is. My a nine millimeter bullet learned those is about that that size is projected. They're like we. Oh, I don't know what he was shot with, but. My, I, I know, I know what I, I know that they're trying to do because I, I seen it, I seen it. My friend got shot with one, not, not because of drugs. It was a point two two. I know what that is. It's like a, one of fires mushroom heads, we mushroom heads with that size. Uh. There, my, it was shot with a leg, and my eyes are whole with this size. Foy was in shot with a point two two, and that's a fact. Foy was mm. shot with a bugger, a cat, a proper. Are you, are you finished now? No, I'm not finished. It was a, it was a, it was a, not a, a model size project, but that's a fact. Looking out over these historic walls, I see a peaceful city, a safe city, a hopeful city, full of young people that should have a peaceful and prosperous future here where their roots and families are. That is what I see today with you. islands look forward today and we see the chance at last to escape those heavy chains of history This area, Cragen, was a no-go area for police or army personnel. Then came a chilling display of firepower in the staunchly Republican ghetto of the Cragen. Our community was like an open prison. It was completely surrounded by armed British forces. There was armed actions on the street every single day, and it was a really, really bad time, a very emotional time. God's country, this is where I was born. Maybe you'd have sh shot a bloody soldier two or three streets away and you'd have came through the houses to get away. And I decided to join uh, the movement when I was 15. So I did, and that was 1971. And I was eventually captured and I was interned. Some stayed, somebody worked out that I'd served the equivalent of a 16-year prison sentence, but I'd never been convicted. I first met Hugh when I was investigating punishment shootings in Northern Ireland. I'd heard about a mother who'd brought her son to be shot. 
I wanted to know how this could have taken place within the United Kingdom and what had happened afterwards. How is something like this resolved within a community and within a family? The troubles were long over, but there was obviously a connection, and I wanted to try and understand it. How do wars truly end? These are big questions, yet I thought I was there to make a short news report and that I'd be finished in a few days. I was wrong. You know, it tells me the police officer encouraged him not to make a complaint because he said, look, it's a vicious circle. The, the, the people who actually carried out the attack uh, was his ex-partner, his ex-wife's son. Your man was shouting, we'll be back and we'll burn you out the next time. Now, uh, I think that's an immediate threat. Hugh was expelled from the Republican movement during the peace yeah, process. Yeah. He wouldn't say why when we first met. Nowadays, he works within the Rosemount Resource Centre, and part of his work is to mediate between the armed, distant groups and individuals who are judged to be a problem. One of his cases involved Philly O'Donnell, who'd been accused of drug dealing and had taunted distance on Facebook. Philly was a really bad, bad influence in that community. The community were going absolutely berserk. You're always going to get bad apples. But the community will deal with them themselves. No, but my brother, it cannot stop surprising me. Like, because one day I sitting just pure having a leaf of sleep, walks in my room, he would look at I have, look at I have, and I saw what? Pulled out a coat in 19. I tried to really fire it and saw him pour on all those good. The fires I got there. So Philip had a real gun up the stairs. Not remember, said a fire be hangs, mushroom heads. Remember the black one he had? Right there. The black one he pulled back, he got there and he went and got boom. Well, it's, I, I can't think of the man again, Barry, but... The armed groups don't decide on their own. They, uh, listen, we'll, we'll... Have we shot anybody out of that street yet? It's, that's not the way it works. I had to give them £2,000. And they wanted more. It's the community who go and ask them to take action against individuals who are carrying out antisocial behaviour. So Philip was on drugs every day. And then when he didn't have the drugs, the coming down was... That's what we had to live with then. No, my husband been in jail. I haven't got nobody to say, you take over. I was here too. Don't forget that. As your right time man, so just don't forget that. They had issued two or three warnings to him. We became aware of the threat and we intervened on his behalf and we were told quite bluntly to mind our own business. They told me what they were going to do. Well, Philip, they would shoot him with a low caliber gun, that they wouldn't hurt him as bad as what he was going to get. And I, I, just, I don't remember what I even said then after that, because I just, I just don't remember. All I just remember was just, I couldn't even walk right. I was shaking. And uh, I thought, well, what am I going to do? If I were on Magella's shoes, I would have come to the same conclusion. After the shooting, Philly was banished, as it is called, to Belfast, and Magella had to begin renegotiating with Hugh and the shooters for his return. Are we to blame? I said to my husband, you're to blame too. I never done anything. We were never strict with him. I was never strict. Philip has gone on to be a boxer, brilliant at sport. Philip, I had no trouble at school with him. They had great friends, and I'm the one they, have they got lost. Them. They got lost. Mm. They got lost somewhere. Okay. It's three. Oh, I never realised how much drugs would, methadone, cocaine, 
Ah, uh, then they were taking blue. Oh my God, now I just couldn't believe it. My own, my own wings would be looking to take diazepam, uh, Valium, uh, cocaine, uh, what else is there? Any drug that was, it was just, just take it all on. Were you ever tempted to go to the police? Nope. And you glad you didn't? Oh, I would you? never ever have tempted to. Mm. <laughs> Cops? Our community will never expel armed Republicans. The history of, of opposition to Britain is too long, and it's, it's almost uh, instinctive in people. Uh, I think it might be even a gene within uh, the Northern Irish. The community doesn't forget what happened 30 or 40 years ago. They will never left the phone and phone the police about IRA volunteers or IRA actions. It's still seemed as informing, right? And, and it's probably the worst thing that an Irish person could be accused of as being an informer. I mean, it's horrific. I, I wouldn't, I would, I would rather be dead first. I'm told that the police haven't been in the area at all at night because there are dozens of armed Republicans walking about. I think the longer the police stay out of the area, the better. I was very confused by Hugh when I first met him. Some of his statements seemed implausible. But Philly really had been shot, and Hugh was central to the negotiations. It was through him that I met Gary Donnelly, a well-known distant Republican in Derry. He brought us to see this police raid. Hi, boss. Uh, about 30, kicked the door in. And then they grabbed and fucked up a bad wall, and the cops said, they might know you since I had you be a bad 15 years ago. Jesus. He says. Yeah, that's what he stood there, and then he told the whole story. Yeah. If you don't accept the system, don't accept the British police, then basically this is what they will do to you. And do you have parallel shootings? No. Were you ever in the military? No. Were you were never in the IRA? No. <laughs> The enemy has not gone away. One time Republicans, now in the pay of the enemy, mock us with labels like microgroups and self-importantly ask us, what's your strategy? For us, the answer is quite simple. Our strategy is to continue to build our resistance to the illegal occupation of our country. There's a lot of Republicans in this city who have invested an awful lot in struggle and suffered terribly, have lost loved ones, have spent the best years of their lives imprisoned, and they have got nothing whatsoever out of this phony uh, peace process. And I think as the days go on, it, it, you know, more and more this is beginning to be exposed. Um, do you think the punishment shootings had much effect on support? The Saturday movement don't carry out punishment attacks. But you don't have a normal society. Why politicians will, will fly around the world proclaiming to be normal and everything's sorted. Uh, the police force here has very little support in these communities. You know, there's no police officers living in these communities. Uh, you know, they want somebody from these communities to decide to join. 
the British police then may move out of these areas. And in the absence of that uh, proper, normal, structured policing, there will be uh, times when, you know, when the community will, will, will take action itself. They give you tobacco or anything? Because I said, Steve Phillips says to me, Mammy, and I said, I'm going to ask him, I said, see if, see if there was a resource center, don't give me money to buy tobacco for you. And Phillips Place as well, it's, it's a flat. It's a wee flat out. You know, I, I have you ever know been in Belfast? No, right, I know really the way up. No, I know how to get to Belfast. I just, when I get there, I don't know how to get to yeah, where we're going. I know. You see where the Europa Hotel is? Yeah. I know which way to go from there. You're you right. sure you don't want to go, Kevin Boy? No. no. Right, now there's the two baths. Yeah. Right. Right from there. There, just. Yeah. Um, do you want to see this on your own? Or... It's sweet. You sure? What's ah, it's good. Four months in March. Four months is good. That's the longest you've ever been away. You know, he was like all the other bigger and all the boys were all drinking. But he wasn't working at you didn't start drinking very well. Well, it's 15, probably. And what age are you now? 19. And when did you start taking drugs then? It's about 16. Six days the longest I ever went without sleeping. Without sleeping? Oh. It's about the fifth day I couldn't get more eyeballs. So I started swallowing bags like that and drinking them with bottles I have to shot and sound like that. But yeah, I just started sweating. When I was up near the window, I could see people running past. I could see about 70 people in the back in the dark, all up and around, and hiding behind trees and all, but there was nobody even there. Mm. And I started seeing snakes with people's heads on it. I remember night in KB in the house, I seen the gunmen and the kids in there. But I knew what, knew what way to control it, was, so I was kept drinking water. The front. Uh, and then I thought, then, what if you think I am somebody trying to kill me? I was afraid. But then I knew how to come down off it. Because I started naking pints of water. They slow your heart rate down and fill your. Because see when you're put in, it takes all the water to your body. Your head starts to play mind games because it's dehydrated. So you fill your body back with water again. That slows the, like, one of the flash things in your head. You know, it makes you think too much. It slows them back down again. And then the mood swings was. Oh, right. you get depressed the first two days, and after the two days, you get angry. And after the anger, then. Threatened to burn the house. Threatened to kill Kevin Barry. He was going to, I was afraid he was going to kill me. Um, I, was, I, was, I was afraid. The way you were just you know, going, you know, them big noises, making big, really aggressive shouting. You know? No, smashing things up. You know, all that. That's why Kevin Barry was so afraid, you know, because he. I made that night I jammed the bedroom door because I thought that you were going to come on when I was sleeping and kill me. I really thought I was too afraid to go to sleep. Does it sound really weird to you? It sounds mad, eh? That's when I was an addict, like, addicted to it. Mm -hmm. How different is he to Kevin Murray when he's Kevin Murray's age? Uh, a lot different. A lot different. It's different these I mean, days. That's what he, Kevin Barry is. Kevin Barry is just Kevin Barry, isn't it? He wants a snake out for his birthday because he thinks it's dangerous. Kevin Barry thinks about throwing knives, hatchets, hammers, anything that. You know, yeah, I got a sense of it. I, but at the same time, I don't think he knows why. Phones. 
films. Um, but he's not violent. Yes. Does he, Philip? No. Does he even got a violent bone in his body? Uh, I think, would you like me to come back to start? Would you say no, sorry, Claire, but I'm going to come back. But you asked what I asked you the other day. I asked somebody to find out for me. Don't think he's that bad. He's not, but then again, it, he, he, it's rather than if he's coming down. So he stayed the weekend without the threat to get shot again? Now I see it. She's going to get back to me about that one. I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you. I'll see you later, alright? I'll go up to you, she's not nice for Uh, lights are uh, crazily at the far end. This is our older men's snooker hall. And as I said, there's, you can see from the photographs on the wall, it's, it's very, very well supported there. We have maybe 14 or 15 different projects and programs running here. We had a, an upsurge of honesty drinking and antisocial behaviour in the Rosemount area over the last five or six weeks where young people were out on the, at the top of zigzag steps. On the ground at the moment in our area, we're seeing a generation of young people growing up who believe that they've been left behind by everyone, basically. They class themselves as a lost generation. There's zero opportunities for jobs, for progression in life, as they see it. Most of the young kids we deal with, right up to 24-year-olds, they, they have 24 and believe that that's their life loved. I think the peace process was delivered as a package, mainly to stop um, violence, but also to create a better life for the younger people and the younger generation coming through. On that point, I believe it hasn't really delivered. Uh, just under a year, we've dealt with 112 cases of people being under threat, and we've resolved, to the victim satisfaction, 105. So. I mean, it's a high, very high success rate, 90, maybe 6, 97 percent success. Well, he must have money, does he not? He's fucking, he's himself up somewhere. He says he doesn't, you know, but fuck these. See, if he was under uh, a death threat, he could fucking sleep at my house. Uh, but? Uh, I've talked to him, but you're saying no. There's nothing there. There's nothing at all. Well, listen, if we can get him to get somewhere tonight and tie him with us tomorrow, Aye. then we, we will get him sorted out in Belfast. Aye, so if you can call. relay that then. Aye, aye, aye. Okay. Be, hey. All right. No okay, All right, Gord. Hey, okay. We're not dealing with monsters. We're dealing with people who are our neighbours. But when it comes to these sort of negotiations and the neighbourliness and the friendship, are all put aside and it's dealt with very, very professionally, I have to say. How concerned are you for Fidio Dunn? At the moment, um, he's in no circumstances with Fully. Fully is expelled out of the city. Now we're trying to keep active support with Fully um, and Trying to encourage Philly on the projects and different things. Now it's 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 up to Philly himself if he wants to avail of those services. But I think we have to be here as a support mechanism to show that there is some support out there for him. Um, do you think he deserves it? No one deserves to be shot because of the circumstances we've grown up in here. Violence has been acceptable, and in some people it's justified. How concerned are you for younger women that come back? I don't know how to answer that. Yes, Colin. I just want to talk to you about the folly thing when you when you come back, okay? Yeah. All right? All right. See you then. Bye. He he has a meeting now at two o'clock. How private are our conversations here? Uh, entirely private. Just you, I, and whatever uh, section of the 
intelligence establishment is listening in at the moment. I, I would assume the armed groups, when they need to speak to us, they, they don't speak to us on here. Given that we deal with all the armed groups, it would be foolish to think that our conversations are being recorded. Hugh assured me that I would now also be watched and that I had to be careful regarding him and the centre. I wasn't sure what to think, but from then on, our main communications were face to face. Philly was back home. There had been trouble in Belfast and it was thought that he would be safer in Derry where you'd have to submit to drug tests and closer monitoring. What are you doing at the moment? Said about all the Facebook. Uh, Facebook. Uh... Do you have many friends? Ah. Uh... So he can't go out. You see, he's, he's just has to lie low at the minute, and he has to get a drugs test. So been stuck in the house. He hasn't got no friends. He can't go out to know his friends. The minute you know, he just stays in the house. We've had time to reflect on that now. So it's. But it's what the damage has done to him because it hasn't made him any better. You know, psychologically, it's, it's played with his head and he's been asking the questions, why? He had been sending me text messages, telling me he's sorry. And then I knew then that there was, some, there was something wrong. And I got him straight to the doctor that morning. And it was... Um, he was thinking of suicide. He told me then he was thinking about it. He was looking for big enough plastic ties that'll go around his throat. This is how dark he feels. He just feels as if he's... Um, I don't know, it's just what negative thoughts he's got. But everything. Head's not the same. Paranoid. Uh, I'm going to certain places. Angry. Not to kill one of them. It's all I'm thinking. When he has a drink in him, that's when he comes out and he cries. About what happened and how he felt. And I was saying to him, I didn't do this to, to hurt you. This is what I did to keep you safe because of what they were going to do if I hadn't taken him up. You know, he has to understand that they were going to sh leave him and they were going to shoot him really bad. Um, and they still could do it now. 17-year-old boy has been assaulted in North Belfast. He was standing outside a shop at Hopewell Crescent when two men dragged him into an alleyway just before 11 o'clock last night and attacked him. The Tell me that was the gym. They were just to look one mad ass girl. And he went down and was drugs, 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 drugs. And that's where I got the proper hitches for the power motors in. Took him away, you know what I mean? Got him locked up. That's when I started going off the rails there. When he went to jail. Why didn't you just run away? I keep running it, but they're eventually like, yes, you know what I mean? They're just getting over and over. I'm just trying to get to the bottom of a parent bringing a child to be shot. They're afraid to come down on the houses. They don't like taking them at risk of you know, getting caught. That's why they give you appointments, shitting appointments, sort of thing. There's about two or three hundred of them. There, but everybody knows who the main characters are. Like. It just still seems weird that, you know, everyone knows who the shooters are. There is a method to put them in jail. There is of course you can. The cops can do it like that. But why don't you help Because the cops are work I wouldn't work with police, no chance. The cops are working with a rat. That's a fact. What do you think? No one's in jail. You know what I mean? The police say it's because nobody in the community will help them. It's all balls. They know all the top boys. You know what I mean? But it's just they don't have evidence to fuck them. 
arrest him. Not sure, you know what I mean? Life. It's all crazy. Six and eight, six to eight. Blind eighty. Um, it's own number eight, the garden gate. Check. 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 Oh, oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> Go more. I was <coughs> allocated a, a lung consultant. He said to me, that's your right lung, that's your left lung. See that white bit there in your left lung? I said, yeah, thinking he was going to tell me that's bronchiectasis. He says, that's cancer. And I said, <laughs> I said, fuck off. Are you for real? I'll either come round or I won't. And if I come round, then fine, everything's okay. And if I don't, then I won't know anything about it. I will be dead. That's the way it is, and that's the realist, and uh, to a certain extent, the fatalist in me. That's life. The mood in the house had changed since Philly had come home. I wasn't sure why, but I felt nervous. Magella was more guarded. Kevin Barry seemed more distant. Kevin Barry's well now, so he's going to be over now. His first year in school now, and he's going to go on to his second year. Seems happy enough now. Like he still goes on well childish, you know. Our people haven't been through the, some of the things that he's been through. Lost in his daddy, going on to jail, and all the after effects that's happened in the house and all the worrying he's had to do, yeah. Because I was telling him, he said he was a wee bit worried about Philip and that for him to keep his eye on him. So Philip's, Kevin Barry's kind of looking out for him, you know. Because he does look up to Philip a lot. He definitely does. Right. I'm going to start uh, trying to get them all on the, on the order now, just have a look around, see if they're all working, if there's all anything missing, if there's anything missing on them, I'll put them to one side. And then we can... Well, there was a great lull last year. There was very little shootings, and I think this year there's been a, a massive increase in shootings. Again, it's always been. A lot of the young people here in this community are suffering from PTS, post-traumatic stress syndrome. You know, when they hear someone was shot, it's like, ah, I know him, or what was he shot for? It's not as if, oh, horrified, this is a tragic thing, that somebody's been maimed or shot, and it's not that reaction that you would normally get in any normal community. <laughs> come ahead, Derek, come ahead. And you go there. Let's see Santa, right? And you go. <laughs> How many other societies do you know that young boys are left in the back alley with two or three balls in their legs for selling drugs? You know, what is normal? It is crazy. But it's normal. <laughs> Stop it, acting like that. Hold on a minute. Mir, Mir, get out, get up the stairs. Get up the stairs, get up the stairs. Get up the stairs, get up the stairs. Get up the stairs. Get up the stairs. don't talk. 
will talk to me. Look after you as well. When I, I'm going to see when they go. I'm bumping you. Don't talk to me. Look at. Kevin Brown. No, he gets off for too much. He's getting thumped when he's go. You think you are strict with Vinny? No, because Paul doesn't act the way he goes on. No, they weren't. They were never that bad. But I brought Philip back last April, by July. He got another death threat from here. The real IRA again. But not that he's done anything. It was just been, an, you know, just an ass. I went up to see one of the men out of one of our multi groups. I went up to see one of them last week, and I said to him that he's get, Philip was getting the blame for throwing bottles at a prominent member of the Thirty Toys. And I says, and Philip has blatantly says, I have not done it. I'm not going nowhere. I'm staying where I am. He went to the shop the other day, but he didn't go on his own, but it was the first time he's went to the shop in about two or three years. For a long time, he wasn't sleeping at all. It was every time he slept, he was having nightmares about mass men, always about mass men, and about all these other things happening to him. A lot's happened in two years, and it seems as if it's been longer now because it's, and we don't go on about it now. We just don't talk about it anymore. I don't want to go on about it because I should never have done it. I realise now it was the wrong thing to do. It was the wrong, absolutely the wrong thing. I'm getting shot even to start off with because it made him even worse and the hatred then that I had towards the paramilitaries. If I had him in some other way of doing, dealing with it, other than that, but it, it's what happens has happened and we can't go back. Is that my fault, guy? Right? Have you been in that? Have you been in that house since this morning? Aye. You're over in that party over there. Not a party. It's fucking just not chargers. You haven't taken drugs as well. Oh, fuck, oh yes. Drugs. Your hands are moving away. Why? Cut the fuck up. I'm a fucking. Don't talk, Philip. I'm not taking drugs. Why do you think he's taking drugs? It's just the way he was moving his hands. Look at there. Does, doesn't it, Philip? I don't want to say that. You didn't have a bottle, Philip? I'm saying about, you know, meth, doesn't it? Somebody up around the corner and they're like this here. No, I know, but. Billy, did you want to come and have a chat with us? No, there's no point. Just let him go. I'm not going to go into politics for sake of the politics. I'm getting into this because it's a vehicle to help my community. Um, and hopefully that will keep me on the right side. So you can see from the response, this is the people who elected me and asked me to stand. So it was a pleasure to stand for them.
What's going on around here at the moment? Fucking everything. I was told I was be lucky if I get left alive or something, and I would shoot me with nine times and break my legs and arms and fucking. Who said that to you? The, the raw. They're trying to fucking make up things so they can shit me, sort of things. Uh, an IRA boy walked past me last week. He's going back and telling the ones in the Rosemite Resource Centre that I was firing bottles at him and calling him a scumbag, no, when I wasn't. They're not power builders. They're hoods with guns, that's what they are. How much do you trust Hugh? Hugh Brewery. I hate Hugh Brewery. The clown. What about Darren? Would you trust him? So he wiped his hands off me. Because fucking, I was blocked up there and I gave my fingers or so. So fuck him as well, you know what I mean? They're all working with a rat as well. Really? Aye. Fuck's sake, there'll be secret Hi. meetings up there, so they're all working with a rat. And the people who are threatening you, have you known them for that? I know all of them. Oh, fucking twads. I think they're brainwashed, all of them, for either their dad's generations, and you know, from like, the, like their dad's now would have been back, you know, in the trouble sort of thing. And they're brought up brainwashed and they all this fucking thing, and they think they're, there's a war still going on when there really is not. Well, they say they have to clean up the streets because there's too many kids out drinking and taking drugs. Sure, they're selling drugs themselves. Certain few boys, there's, their drug dealers are paying them off and they're fucking putting it in their back pockets and they're learning certain free drug dealers selling the town, you know what I mean? And they're meant to be cleaning up the streets and doing whatever, they're fucking twats. The Rosemount Centre is full of the fucking scumbags, it's full of fucking rats, everybody knows it. The last days last last week, that guy was really throwing the rope up right around there and hang myself like. I'm fucking being constantly fucking looking over your shoulder for doing nothing wrong like, you know what I mean, getting blamed or wrong. But I don't want to give anyone the satisfaction of me hanging myself, because they'd be fucking, they'd be loving it down. The voice went for my wee bra and my ma, like I would have been fucking, I would have thrown the rope up ages ago, you know what I mean? So we man, I was telling you about that. He's up here a couple of times with us. Ah, his body has been found yet or and what was that going to do, Philip? Does that mean we take drugs to you? No, not really. It's going to be a week or the last couple of months. I don't know what it's probably about. That's After my last visit, the O'Donnells didn't want to meet anymore. It seemed like they were coming under pressure from a number of directions. Hugh is now undergoing treatment for his cancer, but provided me with updates about the family. The news that we're getting about Philly isn't good. We actually thought Philly had turned a corner. They're saying that he's back in his old ways, and if that's the case, then and they're looking at him. They're, they're obviously close to making a decision. Philly's in grave danger. In my opinion, only one, one outcome for Philly when that happens. Kevin Barry just turned 13 now. 
we've been contacted by the school now has become very problematic in school, particularly with female teachers. At the moment, there's only, I think it's one hour per day in school. It's the school saying he's on his last legs. I don't want Kevin Barr or anybody like him uh, getting hurt again in our community. Our community doesn't want that. And if it takes a fright to, to make him see what he's doing is wrong, as long as it's only a fright, I would be quite happy because the last thing I want to see is Kevin Barry getting hurt. I phoned and called the O'Donnell House, but there was no answer. I didn't know what to make of what he had said. It was impossible to tell if what I was hearing was the truth or exaggeration, and I was starting to wonder if anyone knew. But actually, there was often no difference. One day, I got a call from Hugh. He wanted me to come to Derry because he had something to show me. He didn't say anything more, but he'd never asked for something like this before. It'll be twilight shortly, you know? Yeah. And somebody will come and contact us. The faction we're talking to tonight, they have had been on a purge for the last three weeks of drug dealers in this area. And I mean, they're doing a very, very good job. The number of drug dealers who have approached us, they say, listen, I've stopped, will you let them people know? We're quite happy to let them know, you know. But it, it, there's no way this anybody in this city will be critical of them because they're doing what the police are supposed to do and aren't doing. We waited for darkness. I still wasn't sure what we were going to do or even be allowed to do. Hugh seemed to be suggesting that we were going to meet members of an armed group, but this seemed risky and unlikely. Those involved before had faced arrest and imprisonment. All right, lads. During the course of it, is it okay if, if she goes up to one of them with a mic and says that I would like to ask you a question? It's not good. It's not like. Where, where do you want us? Here? Hi. Hi. Aye, ah, OK. We're, we're just sitting here, aren't we? All right? Uh, they're going to ring me and, uh, and say, hey, that's the other one, and we'll go back that way there. And so we waited. The gunmen were apparently worried about an unmarked police car that had been seen in a nearby estate. Two years ago, this crowd would have told me to fuck off. They would have been looking to shoot me. I actually would have been the biggest threat they had. Because in the past, they were a bunch of fucking gangsters. We, uh, we, we were in Aries Navy as well. Navy? Navy, yeah. We went with frog suits and we tried to blow up a, a British Army checkpoint. It was on the key. 40 pound bomb. We just couldn't get it right to get down. And, Guys just jumped down the fucking river in frustration, you know. These guys were all fucking wearing wetsuits and were carrying uh, guns and plastic bags. Fuck's it. I blew up an army camp one night with a knife in my teeth. Yes? There's no flame about there. Right. Aye. Okay. okay. Where do you want those to go? Right. <laughs> Well, look, whatever sit is for yourselves, you know. Uh, you don't want to mention a specific group. No, no, no. One of my armed groups, I. Where? Up here? Through this gap? Where's the one Right, okay. Okay. You said they want him, that she's going to come to him with a microphone. I did. It's better for a recording. You don't want them electronically recorded. 
What are you talking about? A few minutes? Right, okay. Aye. Aye, not a problem. All right. Hugh's stories had stopped. We were all much quieter now. There was real concern that something might go wrong. It was only about nine o'clock, but the neighborhood was almost silent. <coughs> That's him. There's four or five of them. Hey. Wait. You've got them all now. Well, they're going to come right down to you. Can I put a question to you now? The relief was huge. Suddenly everyone came out of their houses again. I could even hear them chatting to Hugh about making the film. Uh, yeah. Am I on? Am I on the phone? I don't think so, no. I wouldn't like to hope she still was off. <laughs> no, it's not that. No, I, I genuinely thought it was <laughs> <laughs> No change in you. Hey, I'll, I'll see you later. Thanks. It all then seemed like a performance. Except it wasn't, for one person. That's Tina Al, so it's Christina Al. Oh, Jesus. She looked out the window, and I see my ass man in the comments. She's in there crying. Hey, do you want me to go on? Well, I, I, I says you probably would, buddy. Christine Allen is a sister of Andrew Allen, 24 year old from Derry, who'd been shot dead by distant Republicans after protracted negotiations with the Rosemount. Like Philly O'Donnell, he had been accused of being a drug dealer. You all right? Jesus, I didn't. Uh, oh, Jesus, I'm sorry. I, I obviously didn't know you were on here. And it, we were getting directed by other people. They were telling us where to go, right? So, if I had known you were on here, I would have come on and said, hey, "Look, we're going to be doing something." Don't. Jesus Christ, I am so sorry. Thank you. Andrew Allen, though, he was killed by Rad. Yeah. His sister was standing at the window and she seen the armed guy come on my rifle and she thought, Jesus, is he coming on here to shoot me? I will get a phone call from her mother tonight. And her mother's a lovely woman. Andrew Allen's man is a, a dote. Uh, she has worked with us in Rosemount and, and she would fucking slip. She would get rubbed into anybody that would slagging us off or saying anything bad about us, you know? What you've just seen, what we've just witnessed, uh, is an armed uh, organisation patrolling the streets. Uh, this w wasn't unusual during the war here, uh, and it's not unusual now in the so-called peace. Uh, what we have in these areas are, are drug dealers who, who don't care who they poison. 
uh, and are quite happy they make a lot of money uh, off the backs of, of suffering and deprivation. And you have groups like the group that we just witnessed there now, who are actively gathering intelligence on these people and, and taking action against them. People in these areas have no difficulty whatsoever with what we just witnessed. They would look on it as, uh, that's the people that's looking after our, our security. murdered by British soldiers at 11 years of age. You know, and it's issues like that, that that affect you. You know, one day there's somebody sitting in class beside you, and next day, you know, a couple of days later they're being buried. Do you ever just think we'll just leave? You know, that's like asking the black man, what would it take you to accept the Klu Klux Klan? You know. My grandfather was shot and wounded in Bloody Sunday. The troubles played a, a role within my, my, my framework or makeup, as you want to say. Do you see a link between the O'Donnell family and the system generally? It's not just about one specific family, but it is apparent and there is patterns within young people within this community. It's hard, you know, to, to grow up in this area. When we're standing here today at, at the Memorial Buddy Sunday and we still haven't got justice. The soldiers who killed people on that day are still having their butt through a court, not even through an interview process. And there's a lot of cases out there on both sides where people haven't got justice and families still feel grieved. And while families still haven't got justice and closure, you're going to still have that element of people who can't leave the past behind. And that then filters down into their children and their grandchildren. So it's, it's, it's very raw. And... We seek peace to be at peace with the truth and hope for what is to come. Another message came. A member of one of the armed distant groups wanted to meet. How do you know who you can trust? Well, personally, community where we know we'll be very safe. Uh, obviously, there's a snare of 100% because the British forces are always trying to uh, recruit the farmers. But by and large, we've been fairly successful in the last number of years. Do you really think you're helping the community? Is that true in the case of Philly O'Donnell?
Fully, as you know, has been shot. He's been banished and he's been beaten. And I mean, he's back at it again. Fully's father's in jail for Republican activity. And the organization that did that was the same organization that's going to punish Fully this time. These people, they're going to, they're going to kill him. See if he doesn't stop, they will kill him. And I mean, that'll stop him. And there wouldn't be a lot of people would mourn him. Uh, and that's sad to say, but that's that's the reality. It was now two years since I'd been inside the O'Donnell house. Plans to film were continually cancelled at the last minute. Only Hugh remained in touch, even when he was very weak from treatments for his cancer. There had always seemed to be a shadow over his departure from the Republican movement during the peace process. Eventually, he agreed to discuss this on camera. To my surprise, some of it had been to do with drugs. I was arrested with a quarter inch of cannabis. And I was dismissed from the Republican movement. It is my belief that it was done because I had been vociferous in my opposition to certain aspects of, of the Good Friday Agreement. What happened was that about two weeks after I was caught with cannabis, uh, I was sitting in a bar one night with my friends and uh, Armed and masked men came in, and it was uh, children in need night. I actually thought it was a joke. And they took me out on the street and tied me to a lamppost and, and pinned at me. Uh, and the IRA claimed responsibility for it. What's painting? They poured paint over my head. Uh, and the, w w they put stuff on it that wouldn't make it stick. Initially, I couldn't get my head around why uh, the Republican family would do that to me. Uh, if I'm being totally honest, it took me about four years to get over it. Yeah, I was involved with the Republican movement since I was 15 years of age, maybe 21, 22 years. So it was all my adult life up to that point. Now, that certainly was like a death in the family. When you're loving it at the levels that we were loving at, and the adrenaline levels are just high all the time, just to stay alive. Uh, all are things like enjoying your children, enjoying your children growing up. I probably must because of my involvement with the Republican movement. Uh, and that is the only regret that I have. I'm actually delighted now that I'm in the situation now because I'm, I'm closer to my family now. So that's the good that came out of it. Finally, there was news from the O'Donnells. Philly O'Donnell Sr. had just been released from prison after serving seven years of his 13-year sentence. It was now nearly three years since I'd been in their house. I had no idea how it was going to be received. Oh, uh, excuse me? Um, is your name Mr. O'Donnell? Yep. <laughs> Sorry, my name is Sinead O'Shea. I was going to call over to your house, but I heard that you came out of prison this week. I just came week. out on Tuesday. I... How are you doing yeah, anyway? It's, it's hard, you know, don't get me wrong. It's hard, but, you know, I'm getting there. And when you're in jail, there's nothing you can do. Your you. friends out here, but they can only do so much. Mm. You know, you can only call on too many favours. After I went to jail, I mean, it's blamed for the Republican movement. So they went and done, got involved in drugs and went involved in this, trying to get back at me, you know, so... But, I mean, they've all, thank God, they've all wised up now a wee bit and yeah. changed their way, so we can't complain, but... Um, and how's Kevin Barry? He's 15 now, he's at a nice place now, so... We were away yesterday doing a bit of barnton and... Yeah. You know, so we're getting there and he's taking up boxing now, you know, where he's getting rid of frustration and the anger. Yeah. <laughs> No, I think she got sick of me phoning her. I haven't uh, talked to her for about two years. Where are you? 
Um, if he's had the chance to ask Philip before we go, he doesn't love here. He doesn't go. Philip's settled down now. Um, have his girlfriend. No way. You can ask him for it. Hello. Hello. <laughs> oh, lovely to see you again. Do you remember me? Uh, yeah. I'm going to follow this fucking John Jane Rambo. I'm going to have to be for this fucking BRY and that Rana. Yeah, I was going to join them at one stage, but there's, there's no hubris. We're going to join them. Come back, you're 16. Fuck's sake, wouldn't they now? Not a chance. <laughs> wouldn't they let me in? What age are you now? 15. And when are you going to be 16? In March now, just a month's time. OK, and what are you going to do for your birthday? I don't know yet, probably. Uh, get more gym stuff and boxing stuff and all. Stuff like that. Yeah, what's the story with the boxing? Gets a aggression and all and stuff out. How aggressive are you? Nah, not that bad no more. I'm taking it out in a bag up in the gym and take people's heads. <laughs> I was kicked out of the studio, or kicking a teacher's door for you know? Because I heard her, her and another teacher talking about my family's no time with that went to jail now. I kicked the door for you and fucking grabbed her by hair and dragged her out the fucking hall. I was in a killer too, but the teacher pulled me off her. What do you mean, but you were going to kill her? I was going to kill her. Why? Because I heard her talking about my family, and I think things got well bad. When I don't care if it's about me, but when it comes to family, I think that they hurt. And did you not feel a bit bad about hitting a woman? It doesn't hurt her. Well, okay, dragging her by the hair. I don't give a fuck. I would have done more than that if you would have pulled me off her. That's my, that's my family. At the end of the day, mm. you do the same thing to protect them. Mm. But do you think she was really going to harm your family as much as you could have harmed her? No, but the thing is, I, just fl I had anger problems, still do, but then I just really, I flipped out. That, that's, I shouldn't have really done it, to be honest with you. A couple of years ago, got my nose broken on and stuff like that by them, but, but I cracked. Who broke your nose? The, no, the Republicans, Prime I turned around and three men just ran over and just knocked me out and I was on the ground, they were jumping my legs and put me in the nose, he still took cat boots and jump all over my head and all and pads and all, but it doesn't really do that much damage. But actually, someone said to me that you were in trouble and that, um, and they said, well, maybe it wouldn't be the worst thing if you got a fright. A fright? Didn't I laugh? Folks like my whole life, I'm afraid man, man in my doorway and K-47s and fucking machine guns when I was in my about nine. And they're like, they're fucking afraid. What do you think about what happened at Philly when he got shot? Well, if he didn't get shot now, he's getting shot in the head, so... It's, he's all right, help, he's all right now. He can still walk on him. It's, it's a bit of problem with his legs and stuff like that, but he's not, he's not lost it, so he's all right. Just after he just lost the head and then took him about four years to calm down. Now he's just he's just about camping down now. Fuck's sake, all after all that time. Um, uh, Philly, how's, uh, Philly, how's your work going? Philly? Um, how's your work going? Work? Yeah. I don't work. Um, are you just getting ready for being a dad? Uh, He's when I'm gonna sit down and sit down here. Here, my, I found this in the attic. I might keep it, well. Oh, that's nice. Mm. Oh, see. Oh, Did you show that to them, boss? I want to say, only the defeated give up. We are not defeated. Took you out of what about your mum as well? Because you were very close when oh, you joined. Oh, we still are. We me and my mum and joined the hub. We always were. It's your Irish ma, you understand, like. What did your dad do? Blew it up. Blew up what? Just driving to the police station. Um, and he got caught doing it. Yes. Did people, what did people make of that around here? Called him a fucking agent. <laughs> I've hit them since we down with the jail. No work, smoke on the grass, and, but I've never talked real drugs until I was about, third, until about 14. And have you actually tried to commit suicide? Most times. 
But I don't think I think about my family, you know, my dad, fucking, my dad getting out all sorts, I was looking forward to it. But if, if, if my dad wasn't here, I think I'd be a bit away. No, not laughing, no. Because he's like my best friend, me, him and Foy, like best friends. How common a thing is it, feeling suicidal in this area? Oh, dairy? Fucking wild for it. Why is that, do you think? Drugs. In that case, then, maybe the paramilitaries had a point about the drug dealers. What, shooting people? In that they were dangerous for society. I thought they're dangerous taxing them, right? You know what that means? Like, they go to your house, say, if you don't give me five grand, I'm going to shoot you, but if you give me five grand, I'll let you drug deal in my community. If you give me, and they come back, give me six grand, give me seven. If you're a bad drug dealer, they come, give me 20 grand. I will let you stay in there. Come back the next month, give me 20 grand. Give me 20 grand. Well, I drove there in the community and tell their fucking defenders of the community. See, I don't, I don't think about it. See, no doubt you shot policemen and shot Brits and fucking took the fight to the people that they should be. No fucking power, I probably bring them now. That's gospel, like, but just not that way no more. They're just so, they're sold out Republicans. There's no, they're just sort of hoods with guns. After I met that week here, just, just called Cam the way and just moved away from it all. Mm. Do you think that was all that you needed to happen? Right. Bag time. She's a lifesaver. She's a lifesaver, but she's also a fucking con. Let me see. It's a real rider, boy. See that? It's a real rider. Let me see. Who's that? Me? Your fingers are working. I'm not right? exactly. Just in case he used it for some propaganda or something. <laughs> Would you prefer it with the troubles back? Fucking right. I'm fed up bored. There's no one around this place. That is That's that is quite surprising for people. Mm. That you would want the troubles to come back. Everyone would. What do you mean by everyone? All people my age and all. What do they want? The troubles back, the madness, the riots, the fucking shooting, the bombings, and everything. Why do you want the troubles to come back? Because they love us to forget. I would no power, fuck's sake. I can't be an RPG now, go out and shoot the cars, but. So much has happened this year is a good year for us. Phil's out of prison. Philip's happy. He's going to be a dad. We're all everybody's grand, Kevin Barry's. So this is a good year. It just worked itself out. Uh, it has, that's what it's done. Over the last couple of years, it's worked itself out. What happened, happened then. And I can't change it. And I just you just have to take every day as it comes now. Six weeks after we filmed this scene, Philly O'Donnell Sr. was shot in both knees by distant Republicans. The shooting took place less than half a mile from his home. I sent several messages to Magella and the O'Donnell family. They didn't reply. It had been exactly five years since Magella had brought Philly O'Donnell Jr. to be shot.
Thank you.